Today, a country known as much for green energy as for, well, But behind the scenes, one of the world's greenest nations is struggling to kick its dirtiest habits. That's a warning sign for the US and other countries looking to clean up their power. This is Tim McDonald reporting for Climate Desk from the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia. The power station behind me is one of the biggest sources of carbon pollution in all of Germany, and it's burning the dirtiest coal in the world. Germany is in the middle of a complete energy makeover and today gets nearly a quarter of its power from renewable sources like wind and solar. But it still gets nearly half of its power from coal-fired stations like this. Experts say that if Germany wants to meet its aggressive climate goals, it's going to have to find a future without coal. Uh, this is the biggest problem now in Germany. As Germany struggles to achieve its groundbreaking climate vision, join me on a trip from high-rise corporate offices uh, There are chances and there are challenges to coal mines deep underground When we want to establish now a permanent solution to bucolic villages caught in the middle. People from outside Germany have got the feeling we are more or less perfect and everything is correct. It's not. The German population overall, and that's true in this region as well, understands the existential threat of climate change and understands that burning lignite, which is the dirtiest of all the fossil fuels, is not uh, something that can go on indefinitely in the future. Uh, so coal will have to be displaced uh, soon, but currently we don't see that happening. Now we are here at the open cast mine of Garzweiler. It's one of the biggest pits here in Northern Westphalia. The region's signature product is lignite, a low-grade form of coal that's dirtier than the hard coal commonly found in the U.S. Every year, some 40 million tons are pulled from this mine alone to be burned at nearby power plants. We have to overcome this sort of energy production if we want to reach our political climate uh, aims. Instead, the company operating Garzweiler says the mine will remain active into the 2040s, when Germany aims to get the majority of its power from renewables. But it's, it's really, as you can see, it's quite the, um, a lot of effort to get the lignite out of the ground. The lignite is then uh, taken out by these huge excavators. The largest one has a diameter of just the wheel of 22 meters, which is a seven-story house. And what we're seeing here is really only part of the problem. The other problem is burning it and producing giant amounts of CO2 emissions. As Garzweiler continues to expand, villages on the mine's edge are in the way. Now we are here, the village of Jüchen, and afterwards we are going to visit the villages of Borschemich, Emirat, and Holzweiler, where we are going to visit Gisela. Okay, here we go. Schönen Tag noch. This is a region uh, which was first settled uh, in some 7,000 years ago. The Romans were here. Over the next two decades, much of this area will be bulldozed and about 2,000 residents relocated to make way for the mine. Uh, this uh, yellow ribbon is a sign of resistance and a, a sign of solidarity for the people who are going to leave their, their villages. Hello Gisela. Is a, here is a peaceful world with our, with our fields, with our gardens. Starting from potatoes, beetroot. I very often say it's a little bit of a paradise because it's very quiet here, if you don't hear the machine, of course. In late March, the regional government decided to curb the mine's growth, sparing Gisela's village. But many neighboring villages still face demolition. Imarat is already a ghost town. We have to sit and bear it. That's all we can do, that nothing else. Coal already, hard coal, is already the dirtiest fuel uh, we have and lignite is even more dirty. Our objective is to produce about a tenth of the emissions uh, we produce today by the year 2050. But just one major uh, lignite power plant produces about half of the greenhouse gas emissions we would like to have in a few decades. Last year, coal's share of Germany's energy mix rose three times as much as renewables. Meanwhile, an ongoing slump in the EU's carbon trading market has removed a major incentive for the biggest polluters to clean up their acts. 
So it's um, far too cheap to produce a ton of CO2. RWE is really very much a symbol of a very large company uh, dependent on a business model of the past, a business model depending on burning fossil fuels. Behind me is the headquarters of RWE, one of the largest utility companies in Germany and the operator of the lignite mines. Thomas Beer, a corporate planning executive, says that large utility companies like RWE are going to have to drastically rethink their business model to fit into the energy venda. We have to address uh, these uh, CO2 reduction concerns. We are strongly convinced that the system will not work without lignite in the moment. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, there is a, a, a strong case for lignite also in the future. The fossil park will still be uh, desperately needed in those hours where uh, no wind is blowing and no sun is shining. But will it? A short drive away, a very different coal mine is putting that thinking to the test. Prosper Haniel is a hard coal mine slated for closure by 2018. It's a deep point, so it's one of the deepest hard rock mining places in the world. Engineering professor Andre Niemann has a vision to give the mine a second life. If you want to integrate renewables in a major part, we need energy storage systems. The energy storage solution is not solved yet. Right now, we're over a thousand meters underground. This is one of the largest hard coal mines in Germany. Still active, every year this mine produces over four million tons of coal. But Dr. Niemann wants to turn this place into a giant battery for renewable energy. We have a huge mining history. We have uh, a large number of, uh, uh, of mines and existing infrastructure still in operation. And now we have access to this deep ground. Our idea was uh, two years ago, what can we do with that? Wind and solar power will pump water up out of the mine into an above ground reservoir. As this illustration shows, gravity later pulls the stored water back underground, activating turbines that reproduce the electricity. Niemann says the project is a new opportunity. Mining is temporarily, but we want to establish now a permanent solution. So we have to change from temporarily to permanent. At Gartzweiler, that future still seems far off. Because the renewables are getting stronger, stronger and stronger and we, we simply don't need this old kind of uh, coal-fired power plants anymore. Oh. Cleared out villages are already beginning to crumble. We are now, see, really, at the end of the world.